everybody, it's Amanda here from scrimpymommy.co.uk and today we're going to make some beautiful bows and these are a little bit stepped up and um, we've got some that are slightly plainer and then some that are even more stepped up. So I'm going to show you how I made them. Um, we do have the bow builder punch but sometimes you need some bows that are just that little bit bigger for parcels um, and decorations so I'm going to show you these. It's nothing new. I'm using the envelope punch board. I'm just showing you how you can, you know, make some really beautiful bows. And if you package them nicely, you can sell them on your craft fairs. Who wouldn't want to buy these all beautifully packaged? Um, they are good for swaps. Um, if you're in the crafty community, you probably might um, indulge in swaps with loaded envelopes or whatever. Um, I run a swap group and we swap and, and this is nice as a little goodie pack or they're nice to make and maybe not package up but have them to hand to go on cards or boxes or packages for your um, projects that you're making um, so without further ado I'll get on with it and I'll put these to one side um, I'm using the cheers to the year stamp set at the moment um, I'm giving it a bit of an extra plug because I am just started to sell monthly kits it's all advertised on my blog and one of the reasons I've made these little handmade embellishments is because these will be going in some of the packages um, for the ladies who buy the stamp set so they're going to get some of these so we're going to make our own background for these so I've got some whisper white here and we're going to use the snowflakes. I've already mounted them on different blocks. I've got a selection of blocks. It does make it easier to have a few and then you're not having to take a stamp on and off of a block and get all in care. So I'm using the snowflakes here and I'm going to use um, crumb cake and smoky slate. Now these are to mimic the silver and bronze tones in the year of chia papers but without having to use the foiled paper we're going to make our own and it's going to look just as good. Okay, so first of all, we are stamping with um, the crumb cake. I'll just move that out of the way, that's for later. <laughs> stamping with the crumb cake and we're going to stamp the whole sheet. And we're just going to stamp a nice pattern. Doesn't matter if it's even or not, it probably will be for me. I'm not very good at stamping random. Um, I'm a Leo. <laughs> I like things to be symmetrical. <laughs> I've said it before. Um, so yeah, I do struggle with like random patterns. I like it to be neat. Um, so hence I'm going for quite a structured kind of pattern. But I'm not measuring in between or anything. That doesn't matter. Um, so down here. But I've got some kind of a... a kind of synchronised pattern going on there okay just makes it easier so I'll put that to one side and I'll come in with the smoky slate and I'm using the smaller snowflake and I'm just going to stamp in and between as I say uh, kind of in a pattern but you know it's not been measured okay right. and it doesn't matter if it's not perfect um, it really doesn't. It's still going to look amazing. And this is a cheap way of making your bows. You don't have to use up your DSP. You can just make your own. Okay, so now I'm going to trim my paper to size now. So I'll just get my trimmer in and to make these bows on the envelope punch board you need to cut your paper make sure first of all that it measures 11 and a half inches long in case you need to trim some off which with a4 size you do so we want it 11 and a half and then we're going to cut that into one inch strips okay one inch strips so you're going to get quite a few obviously from your sheet of A4 just try and make sure you keep it fairly straight you can check your measurements at the top and at the bottom if I just zoom out slightly you can see you've got your measurements all the way down at the bottom here so you can check that your paper's straight 
Okay, <laughs> let me just move my paper. I need to, um, I normally sellotape it down and I've, uh, my sellotape's in the other room. <laughs> so it might slide about a bit. Oop, that slid. Never mind. Try and keep hold of your paper so that it stays straight. That one just slid a bit, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if some of them look like they've got loads of pattern and some of them look like they've got none because when it's formed into a bow, it really it really doesn't matter. And you've just got a little bit of pattern and the fact that each one's different is good. They're different but the same. <laughs> and that's good. So the last one there. Okay. Okay. So we put those to one side. I'm not going to need all of those today. You're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, obviously, from an A4 sheet there. So I'm just going to pop them to one side. And then I need to cut myself a piece which is four inches wide. So I'm going to cut it, I'll cut it that way. And then I can use the other half for a card base maybe. So I want it four inches. Okay. And then I'm going to do the stamping again. Really quickly. Get my inks back out. If you've got 12 by 12 sheets, um, you can do it all in one go. Oop, that's my stamped, but it doesn't matter. That's because I'm rushing. <laughs> and this is going to make the tails of our bow. Okay. Put that away. Come back in with the smoky slate. And I think these colours really substitute well for copper and silver. Against the really lovely whiteness of that card. Um, Nobody would really tell the difference. If you told them it was copper and silver, they would definitely believe you. <laughs> and there. Okay. So those are four, that is four inches wide. So now we want one inch strips cutting out from that. And that will make our tails for our bows. And so I'm not going to cut all of it now. I'll just cut the amount that I need um, for the video. One. I'll do five, three, should have enough with four. Okay, so those are the tails. So they are four inch by one inch. Okay, this is the fun bit now. This is where we get to having some a bit of fun. And we're going to get our envelope punch board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one bow and then I will pause and I'll make the rest and then I'll start again. So you get your strip and I'd just like to give a quick shout out to Tiffany uh, over there in America, Tiffany Heggs Morrow I think is a full name, I just call her Diva and I'm going to leave a link to her channel on my blog because this is where I've got this from um, because I used to always make these bows in separate strips for layers because it's going to be a double layer bow and then I watched Tiffany and she showed me how to do it all in one one swift action as it were so I will leave a link to her channel on my blog so nip on over and then go and give Tiffany a sub she's awesome fun so you find in this what I've done there is you find in the central central part of your paper give it a little bit of a nip so you've got that bit of a crease there okay and then punch and then just flip it over and punch again then you're going to measure to the three and one quarter inch mark which is there and you're going to punch flip three and one quarter punch then you're going to turn it all the way around and you're going to do the same again three and a quarter punch flip it over three and a quarter and punch 
then I'm going to just move them bits out of the way because if they stack up underneath your punch board then it makes it hard for you to punch and then what you need to do is you need to get these ends here a little bit rounded now you can either round them at the back like that okay or you can put it into the centre part of the punch in here like this okay but not quite centre just off and then punch okay so that's what I'm going to do yeah so you get that and then you turn it and you do the same on the other side and you do the same at the bottom end of your strip and flip and do the same so then you've got what looks like a line of bingo tickets <laughs> Not bingo tickets, you know them machines that kids play on and they put, they play the game and they get a load of tickets and then they have to go and exchange it for a toy and you need about a million of them to get anything. That's what it looks like. <laughs> now with your tail strip you need to punch at the center, central point so that's at two inch. Punch, flip it over, punch and then you put this end in the center of that part there like so okay you just eyeball it doesn't matter if it's not perfect but rather than having it to one side like we did with the ends here you're putting it right in the middle okay and you punch and it gives you that and then you turn get in and you punch again and there you go you're done you're good to go so how you then construct your bows you get your bone folder and you give it a bit of a bit of a curl on each section holding it carefully don't rip it each section just a little bit of a curve it just helps you get a bit of dimension and you can do the same on your tails okay like so then you get your glue or your favorite way of attaching things you can use whatever you want tiny bit of glue at that end and then fold it over and attach it there and hold it. Now sometimes this shape here can appear a little bit squared off, which I don't like. So I'm just going to trim mine. It doesn't really matter, I'm just being finicky. Okay, you don't need to be finicky, but I am. I can't help it. Okay, just leave that to dry. And then do the same with the very end one to there. So a tiny bit of glue. I can get my glue out you could use glue dots and um, when I watched Tiffany she used hot glue which is which is more than adequate um, I'm just can't be bothered to get my glue gun out <laughs> if I'm honest I'm a little bit lazy I'll just snip those because I'm finicky okay all right and then you need to get those back like that and you're attaching this these two bits to the center very very easy and you've got a double bow all in one go without having to cut loads of different pieces it, it just it does cut down on the process so then you fold that to the center and fold that to the center okay line them up have a look till you're happy with it There we go, and then hold it till it dries. If you've got a decent glue, glue gun, glue dots, don't take long. Okay, give that a press. So there's your double bow to start with, and when you've done all your gluing processes, you can poof them up. So now we're going to put glue across the middle of our tails part. Okay. And we're going to attach that like so. Just give that a moment to dry. Make sure all the components in between are dry before you really start on the next bit. You can do it in a you know assembly line. Um, cut all your piece, do all your stamping, cut all your pieces, do your bows, then add your tails, and that's the best way to go. 
Now to step it up, what I did, and I've done it before on a video, is I've added some cutouts of the foil snowflakes and you want three. Three of the little spiky bits on each side, okay? So I don't like that now, that's uneven. One, two, three, okay? And what I've done in these packs is I have, if I just get them from under the pile, I've done just the centre one, that one's got a bit, uh, the centre one's got the fancy foiled snowflakes in and then the other two are more plain. Okay, so that's how I've cut down on supplies a bit. Won't even in shot them, but never mind. And then all you need to do, because these are like paper backed, they're awesome. This Anything sticks these down, they're brilliant, even though they're foiled, they really do glue down really well. So add a bit of that. And then you're sticking it between your top and your bottom bow. Okay. And as I say, these bows are, what does this measure? It'll measure four inches, won't it? It's four inches in total by one inch. So they're just that bit bigger than the bow builder punch when you need just a bit of a bigger bow. And I could sit and make these all day long. You know, if I didn't have to like work for a living and stuff and make food for demanding people that live in my house, I could literally sit and make these all day long. I absolutely love them. And then what you can do is you can just poof them, poof them a bit and shape them back up if they get a bit squashed. Okay, so that's one. Now what I also did was I added um, some snowflakes, which I have cut from glimmer paper. Now this process, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. This process, you you know, you don't have to, but this is how I, I class it as being a bit stepped up because it's just giving that little bit of extra effort. Um, and I've used the small snowflake, please excuse my green fingers, <laughs> the small snowflake from the, what's it called? Seasonal Layers Thinlets. Okay, and it's the smallest one and I've cut it out of the silver glimmer paper. If you're cutting from silver glimmer paper, I would advise adding a piece of scrap cardstock on the top of your sandwich of plates, as it were, just to give it that extra bit of help cutting through um, because it is a glittered paper. Um, so, uh, it can be just that little bit, uh, it's not difficult to cut, but you know, with it being so delicate, I would just add a little tiny shim of scrap cardstock just to help you so that them little pieces cut out without any problems. So then I'm just going to stick that in the centre like so and I'm just going to hold that to dry a minute. Okay. And then the final process to make it look even more beautiful is to add one of the basic pearls and I'm adding the larger size. They are absolutely gorgeous and they really do just finish it off beautifully. Okay. So there you go. Oh, it stuck to my finger. <laughs> I've pressed it on the hard. It's, it's embedded itself in my finger. So there you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I've made my packaging. And when we've done that, then I'll pause until I've made the other two bows. And then we'll come back. So for the packaging, I'm just going to move my bow out of the way. Move those out of the way. For my packaging, I've cut two pieces of cardstock. We've got Whisper White again, so it all matches. And we've got one piece I cut at five, five and one eighth. Yep, yeah, by seven. Five and one eighth by seven. That just happens to be the right size for my cello bags. If you nip on over to my blog at scrimpymummy.co.uk, all the measurements are there. But I do advise you, you know, you might have a different size cello bag to me. So check your cello bags. And then for the topper, I've cut one at five and a quarter by two. And what I just need to do is, I just need to score that. I'm just going to score it at three quarters of an inch. I've cut that wrong. I've cut that wrong. That's not right. It's that one. <laughs> That's not the right piece of paper. Let me just check. Five and a quarter by two. Yes, I, I picked up some random piece of paper off my desk. We want to score it at three quarters of an inch. 
Dear me. Okay. And then bringing our envelope punch board back, what we can do is we can round off those corners. Put my phone on silent before somebody rings me. <laughs> and also round off the, the corners of the topper. It just gives a nicer look. And you know, it's an added bonus and an added feature to the envelope punch pad, so you may as well use it. And I've had that years, they just don't go blunt. Mine's never gone blunt, and I've used it loads. So we're going to come back in with the ink and the stamp again. Getting our money's worth out of the stamp. I'm going to stamp at the bottom corner. I'm going to stamp at the top corner. And then on my topper, I'm going to stamp just off at one corner, like so. And then in the middle, move that to one side. Back in with the smoky slate. Okay. Am I still... <laughs> I think I need to just zoom out a slight bit. Um, camera setups are never perfect. So, just add some of those. And I just think this stamp set is absolutely beautiful. I love it. So that's the topper. And then I'll finish off my backing. From, and this is just packaging. But I always think that if you present something nicely, it shows your work off better. And if you can have it in coordinating packaging, what's going to look better? And what's easier to have coordinated than making your own? using one stamp set and making picking two inks and making everything to match is amazing. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring back in this crumb cake and I'm just going to gently ink the edges of this. Again, this is a step that you could miss out. It's not essential. I just like things to be finished as, as nicely as I can. Sometimes it's just worth putting that little bit of extra effort in, isn't it, to get good results. It's all in the finish, you know. <laughs> it does make a difference if you make a slight, a slight, a slight bigger effort. Oh, where's that gone? <laughs> Throwing my sponge. Okay. So that's that one. And then I'm going to just fold my score line there. And I'm going to ink that one as well. Speed it up a bit. Okay. I'm not going to pause the video. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the process. So I then get my bow and I've made another two. In, in Imaginary Amanda Land, I've made another two. I should have done them before. And what I would then do is use removable glue dots. Or the Stamping Up glue dots are perfectly fine. Or even though they'd say they're not removable, um, they're not over sticky. So, just stick one of those and stick the fancy one in the centre and then the two planar ones would go at the outer edge and then you would just put all three inside your cello bag. There's three of yeah. you. Use your imagination, there's three. <laughs> Seal it up from the bottom so that people can get into them without spoiling all the decoration at the top. Okay, and then you add your topper with some tip, like so. Okay, and then you would have also made an extra one, so in total, you need four bows. Okay because you need one for the top as well. So then you add your topper, like so. And then you would add your bow in the centre, just like I have done here. And I've done two different bows here. I've done a double one, again, the same as the internal bows there. And on this one I've done a single bow, but made the tails longer, so they look really, really pretty. So that's how you do them. 
Remember that presentation is key. <laughs> and you know, it goes a long way if you make that little bit of extra effort. So go and have some fun, go make some pretty bows. Thanks for watching. Bye.